Hey, Taro, I'm a poet, one that just happens to write in a forest. In 2015, I stepped into a very special collection of trees at the Billy Graham Library in Charlotte, North Carolina. While there, I did nothing but write, but they weren't my words. In my heart, they were the lyrics from Billy's Forest. Well, nearly two years later, God spoke directly to my heart again. It was time to grow beyond the library, to write within other collections of trees, mainly my forest in South Charlotte, North Carolina. In every place that I have written, the spirit of Billy's lyrics vibrate the purpose and plan that God has put into play. I never know what I'm going to write about when I enter these forests, which gives us plenty of time to talk about it at the end. Remember, these are not my words. These are the lyrics from Billy's Forest. Chapter 100, February 28, 2018. A light rain falls while I place thoughts into language formation. The forest is very much alive with the sights and sounds of so many birds. None of them seem to have a reason to run from the rain, to take cover. I needed to see this today. Too many times the threat of personal storms turn each and every one of us into introverts. We can't get hurt like this. We do so many things against ourselves trying to get to this place called aloneness. That's not a great place, because the mixed collection of thoughts provoke each and every one of us to create seasons. To get out of the required requires more questions, which digs even a bigger hole. Therefore, we all turn to God as if to question, why? And God always replies, how many times do you want to live this life over and over? The process isn't a recess and shouldn't be a step toward taking cover. The open heart is so easily injured, and yet we keep returning. The part that really catches my attention on this is when he starts talking about how each and every one of us become introverts in an everyday world. With so many activities going on around the world, the smartphone and other digital devices, in all honesty, have allowed us to become introverts by behavior. We would rather go into that plastic world created by the digital device than to deal with a real conversation face-to-face or even over the telephone, hearing somebody else's emotions rather than assuming somebody else's emotions. The process of becoming the introvert is so easy that we feel that being in that moment of aloneness is a great, comfortable place to be. But it's not, because your own voices come to life in your head and heart. You're not listening to the whispers of a living and loving Christ, but rather you're hearing the doubt, the fear, the shame, the guilt from a self that is so alive inside you that you begin to trust that self as you grow in any direction. Now, we all dream. I get that. We all dream really big and we all want things delivered to us and we all want it right now. But we don't put a lot of faith in the process of what's required when it comes to growth. So we go into that introverted stage, we allow those voices to talk to us, and when we come out, if somebody doesn't agree with us, then that's when we become the monster. And then we sit around wondering, well, what went wrong here? Well, where we went wrong is, is that you didn't recognize the fact that you became an introvert in that moment, and the plastic world inside that smartphone is just exactly that. Sure, you can get anything you want. You can go to Amazon and order things right away, or you can go to a web page and get information to keep putting inside your mind, body, and soul. But in the real world, things aren't handed to you that way. And we judge people because of that. I need it now. You need to tell me right now what's going on. You need to tell me what you've been up to for the past week. You need this, 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 and this, and this, and this. And it only forces you to go back to that world of being an introvert, to search for that aloneness. And then when you're forced to come out, then you become that monster. So how do you heal from a situation like this? I honestly believe that you should pray in public. I honestly believe that when you go to a restaurant, just bow your head and pray right there. I think people should watch you pray in public because it will inspire them to maybe create their own conversations with that living Christ. Learn to be open in public and that will teach your mind, body, and soul to be open with what you feel and less, less encourage to go to that smartphone device. We are all addicted to it. We all jump into it when we need to get into that aloneness. But the problem is, is that we are becoming creatures of a very, very bad habit. Learn to pray in public. Learn to talk about God to other people. Create actual conversation and things will begin to grow forward. And a good example of that was just the other day. I was at an interview and this gentleman asked me and he says, wow, you've got some serious energy. Where does this energy come from? I paused for three to five seconds because I know exactly where that energy arrives from, but I didn't know if the gentleman in front of me was going to be able to handle the truth. And I literally said, I go to a very, very powerful church, and when the love of Christ is moving through me the way that it does every day, I exude a lot of energy because I'm very positive in all things that grow forward. The guy shrugged his shoulders and said, hmm, okay. 
And that's where it came from. I was not afraid to tell somebody of my love for Christ. But at the same time, I took three to five seconds to think about, can this man handle what I'm about ready to share? And you never know what happened after that. Maybe he needed to hear that because there was a long line of people trying to get the same job that I was reaching for. Maybe he needed to hear that. Maybe somebody needs to hear something from you. Pray in public. Speak in public. The word of God. I'm Arrow. These are not my words. These are the lyrics from Billy's Forest.